Hello dear learners, welcome again. In this video I am going to explain nature and scope of macroeconomics. In the previous video I have discussed meaning and definitions of macroeconomics. If you are interested you can watch the video I have given the link in the description box. So let's start with the topic and request you to watch till the end and if you find it helpful please like it and if you have not subscribed my channel yet please subscribe you don't have to pay for it it's for free first of all let us understand nature of macroeconomics when we talk of nature of anything or any subject it refers to the basic properties of it and the inherent or inseparable quality of it for example if I say fire immediately what is coming to our mind the very characteristics of fire that is hotness Similarly, if I say ice, coldness comes to our mind. In the same way, if nature of macroeconomics is asked, what comes to our mind? Can you guess? Recall the previous video. Macroeconomics is the study of aggregates or averages covering the entire economy. It also examines the interrelations among the various aggregates and their determination and causes of fluctuation in them. For example, relationship between money supply and inflation, investment and income generation, and so on. It is also concerned with the problems of unemployment, economic fluctuations, inflation or deflation, international trade and economic growth. It is concerned with the problems of uh, unemployment, economic fluctuations, and economic growth and development. So, macroeconomics, also known as the theory of income and employment, or simply income analysis. When we discuss nature of macroeconomics, it also means whether the study of macroeconomics is a scientific study, or it belongs to social science or arts, or science or all all of the three the to answer this question we have to first understand what science is science is the systematic study of any subject which studies causal relationship cause and effect relationship between variables or facts if we look at macroeconomics on the basis of above definition, we find that macroeconomics too is a systematic study of variables like inflation, recession, business cycle, etc. And it also studies cause and effect relationship between macroeconomic variables like relationship between investment and income generation, money supply and inflation. For example, if there is more investment, it will result into more income generation in the economy. So this way, macroeconomics is scientific in nature. But unlike natural science, the outcomes of each causal relation will vary according to the economic conditions of the economy. Though macroeconomic study is scientific, but it is related to human behavior, so it belongs to social science. If we look at uh, macroeconomics in a different perspective, macroeconomic study is an art. For example, implementation of monetary and fiscal policy, process of budget making, imposing of taxes are certainly requires special skill and art. The governor, finance minister and the team apply specific skills and art in the process of uh, taking monetary policy decisions or making budget for the country. Hence, macroeconomic study is scientific in nature, but it belongs to social science and arts. Now, scope of macroeconomics. Broadly, a study of macroeconomics covers the following. Number one, theory of income and employment. In this way, study determination of national income and employment and answers the question why the level of income and employment in the country is at a particular level and how it can be raised to a higher level 
to all to answer all these questions we study theories of income and employment given by classical and keynesian economists and modern economists second theory of money under this we discuss and understand theories of demand for money supply of money and value of money we also study interest rate determination and interaction of money market and real market in the determination of rate of interest and income determination next is theory of general price level we study general price determination and causes on which price level depends we also study the causes of inflation and deflation in the economy and measures to control them like fiscal and monetary policies next thing is theory of economic growth under macroeconomics we study theory of economic growth in this title we learn the theories of economic growth and the factors on which growth of any country depends for example we study classical neoclassical keynesian and endogenous growth theory or modern theory and the classical theory adam smith emphasized on the role of increasing returns to scale or economies of scale and specialization whereas under neoclassical growth based on supply side factors such as labor productivity size of workforce factor inputs then comes keynes keynes argued that aggregate demand could play an important role in influencing economic growth in the short and medium period and finally endogenous growth theories or modern theories this emphasizes on economic growth strongly influenced by human capital and rate of technological innovation and number 5 is theory of international trade there are several trade theories which try to answer the question why and how nations can trade and benefit from trade there are two main categories of international trade one number one is classical or country based theories and number two modern or firm based theories and the classical or country based theories we have mercantilist theory absolute cost advantage given by adam smith comparative cost advantage by ricardo and hecksher ohlin theory under modern firm based theories we have country similarity theory product life cycle th- theory global strategic rivalry theory and porter's national competitive advantage theory so this way under macroeconomics we study all these things so the broadly these are the main subject matter of macroeconomics so thank you so much these are the nature and scope of macroeconomics